In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God.
first reading for this, the fifth Sunday after Easter, is from the book of Acts, chapter 8, beginning at the 26th verse. An angel of the Lord had said to Philip, Rise and go to the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert place. And he rose and went. And there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all her treasures. He had come to Jerusalem to worship, and was returning, seated in his carriage, and he was reading from the prophet Isaiah. And the spirit said to Philip, Go over there and join his carriage. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and asked, Do you understand what you are reading? And he said, How can I? Unless someone guides me. And he invited Philip to come and sit with him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter. And like a lamb before it is shears is silent. So he opens not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who could distract his generation? For his life was taken away from the earth. And the eunuch said to Philip, About whom, I ask you, does this prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning with this scripture, he told the good news about Jesus. And as they were going along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What prevents me from being baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stop. And they went both went down to, into the water, Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized them. And when they came out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord carried Philip away. And the eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found his way that took. And as he passed through, he preached the gospel all the time until he comes to Caesarea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing responsibly the gradual from Matthew 28. Savior of the world. 
Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God, so that we have come to know and believe in the love of God as for us. God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. For this is the love perfected with us, so that we have confidence for the day of the good. Because as he is also, we are in his world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he has cannot love God, whom he has not seen. And this command we have from him, whoever loves God must also love his brother. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
in, so what would be the first step? Well, what would we do to make sure it works? Plug it in and what we would do? Turn on the fan to see if it worked. And how would we know if it was working then? If we had it plugged in and turned on, how would we know? The, if it's been inside, that doesn't mean it's still working. How do we know we're getting nice, cool air? Well, come on, you guys have used a fan before. You feel the cool air, right? You feel it coming on your skin. Now, you can see the fans moving. Maybe the fans and blades are broken, but they don't actually work. But we're going to actually feel it coming out of us, right? Kind of like the wind. Can you guys see the wind? No. But do we know the wind is there? How? We feel it. We see it lift and move some leaves around. Maybe the branches start to sway. If it's strong enough, maybe it takes some of our stuff and throws it in the air. Maybe it turns into some of our like, clothes or shirts or, or our balloons. That's right. Maybe it blows our hair away. When we see it, we, we don't really see the, the air, but we know the wind is there. We can feel it. Have you guys ever seen like a, a dust devil? Do you know what those are? It's like a little tornado of just dust. And it's really, really cool. It's only like this big. So you can go and like hop in and hop out and hop in and hop out. And it's cool to see it all go up. You can see this little like tornado you made, but it's not doing anything in it. Yeah, you've seen the leaves. Maybe you've seen the leaves at your house, like get sucked up and stuff. It's really cool to see some of this stuff. But again, we, we don't see the air coming out. We see the effect it has, though. And we know it's there. We can feel it. It feels nice and cool. Well, have you seen God? No. Has anybody ever seen God? Well, not exactly. There was somebody in the Old Testament who saw like the back of his head, and then his head glowed for like a month because he saw God's backside of his head. But no one's ever seen him like, really see God. Well, how do we know he's there? In our second reading today, in our letter from 1 John, we talk about that. No one's ever seen God. We've not seen the wind, but we know that's real. We've not seen God physically. But we know he's real. How are some ways that we know that God's real? Well, if you look in the Old Testament, people talked with God. They were able to hang out. If you remember Adam and Eve, they were in the garden having conversations and hanging out. How about this? Yeah, reading the Bible, we hear God talking to us, right? We see it throughout the Old Testament, and then we see Jesus. Jesus coming down, and he's talking with God in front of everybody. It wasn't some guy up in the like, room with a big bull horn talking. This was really God talking to us. So if we're listening to our reading, there's one four-letter word that we will all do. We love. Love was one of the biggest things that God was talking about. If God was there, we were going to love people. We were going to show them who he is and what he's done for us. Now, that doesn't mean that we're going to go and like marry everybody. That's not the type of love we're talking about. It also doesn't mean we're going to like spoil you and give you all the candy and stuff that you want. That's not the love that we were talking about. We were talking about the love of growing up and showing you how much God has given you. This is the love that we see that Jesus has for us. Jesus didn't give us everything we ever wanted, did he? No. But he took care of us. He gives us clothing and shoes and food and drink and house and home and all these wonderful, great things. But I can't see Jesus today. Does that mean he's not real? No. The world's going to try and tell us that Jesus, that God, the Holy Spirit, that they're not real. You can't see them, so they're not real. We experience it every day, all the wonderful things that God gives us. When we have love from our friends or our family, we experience the same love that God gives us. Just like the wind and our fan here, we may not be able to see it in person, but we can experience it daily, all the wonderful things that God gives us. We know He's real. We see it in the Bible, and we see it in you guys.
lets everyone in here. God is real. He's not an imaginary move and healer. Don't let the world tell you about him. Would you guys pray with me? Let's go talk to God. Dear Heavenly Father, Dear we thank you so much for the love you give us and all the other blessings. Though we can't see you, we can feel you, and we know you're real. Help us trust in you, Lord, over anything the world offers. In your name we pray. Amen.
because it was my first riding lawnmower. And even though it took six hours to mow, it looked like a city park when it was done. But the best and the worst part of living there was this massive cherry tree we had at the very back of our yard. Worse, because my brother Jay and I had to climb up into that tree and pick all those cherries every year. And it was awful. I mean, the branches would scratch your arms, the bees would sting you for getting into their stash, and my mom, well, she wouldn't let us come down until we reached our quota for buckets each day. But best though, because once she got those cherries, Boy, the good times were coming. We knew that there would be cherry pies, cherry cobbler, cherry shrewel, cherries jubilee. There were a lot of cherries, and she could make them last until the next picking. My Aunt Marilyn would come out from Omaha, too, and pick the cherries with my cousin. And even they would get enough for cherry pastries all year long. She came out to pick it one time. She shared something interesting with me. She told me that the more we pick these cherries every year, the more they're going to produce the following year. I was fascinated by this. The better job we did of picking as many cherries as we could, the more cherries would have increased the next year. Now I imagine if we were proper husbandmen, we could have even taken the branches and started new trees. Maybe we could have turned the whole half acre into an orchard and even started selling the cherries on local farmers markets. My brothers and sisters in Christ, God indeed does such an amazing job of creating the fruit of the earth that with just a little bit of care on our behalf, there's always more than enough for everyone. You know, it's interesting. I don't really eat anything with cherries anymore. Having a chance to think about it with today's gospel, I realized it's actually because that tree had a very distinctive sour cherry taste that I've never had since. I imagine my taste buds just don't connect to other cherries like they did that cherry tree. And probably never will. Because apparently, that's the only cherry taste for me. Today in our text, Jesus refers to his father as the vine dresser. But in truth, a better translation would be husband. Now the King James Version of the Bible helps us to see the usage of this term in Scripture. Like in Zechariah chapter 13. But he shall say, I am no prophet, I am a husbandman. For man taught me to keep cattle from my youth. Or Genesis 9. And Noah began to be a husband then, and he planted a vineyard. And finally, in James 5, Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he receive the early and the latter rain. So, a husbandman is like a farmer, a vine dresser, and a cattleman, all wrapped up in one, according to the scriptures. Even the patriarch Noah, the very first shipmaker, was a husbandman as well. So when Jesus talks about himself as the vine and his heavenly father as the husbandman or the vine dresser, we see that our Father in heaven is very concerned about fruit bearing Christians in every way. And the Father tends to his Son, Jesus Christ, who is the vine, and to us, who are the branches of Christ. It's complete and total oversight of all aspects of the garden we call the universe, and he is carefully tending to it every step of the way. And our Father God, as the ultimate husbandman of the universe, is tending to our husband, Christ Jesus. And to us, the very bride of Christ. When God tends to us, he carefully prunes us as the branches of Christ to bear fruit for 
his kingdom. A kingdom that is a kingdom by virtue of a people being a part of it by faith in Jesus as the Lord and Savior. And that pruning is very interesting as well. When God prunes the branches of his vine, Jesus, he's also cleaning it by removing the dead vegetation so there would be room for the good fruit to grow and prosper. I don't know about you, but I love historical novels. Probably goes back to my being a history major in college. I especially love the Richard Sharp series about the wars against Napoleon in the early 19th century. I especially love the detail in which they describe their rifles, their swords, their quartermaster kits, and their first day. I'd love to participate in one of those live action role play events where you act out the battle with real equipment and live for a few days just like they did in the time period. Same tents, same food, same uniforms. But I think I would like to use modern first aid. After all, this was the time before penicillin was invented. In fact, they had a very interesting way to treat bullet, shrapnel, and sword wounds from the battle. They would actually keep a little tin full of maggots, and they would put the maggots into the wound, and then they'd loosely wrap it with cotton. And apparently, it worked really well. Because the maggots would only eat the dead flesh that could cause gangrenous infection and then die when nothing but the clean flesh was remaining. In our text today, the eternal husbandman works like a matronly maggot that eats the unrepentant dead flesh in his godly garden of the church to make room for others to grow, for the clean, forgiven sinners ready to be nurtured by their vine, Jesus Christ. You know what? I believe it. Certainly because God's word said so. But even more, because I've seen it myself. Now, I do have to be perfectly honest with all of you today. I am losing faith. I'm losing faith in the institutions that I trusted in my youth. Now, maybe I should have never had faith in them. Maybe they were always as I see they are now, but no doubt my perception of them has changed recently with worse. National organizations that I grew up with and participated in that were principled when I was younger seem to have slithered into the slippery slope of political correctness rather than policies of truth. Venerable leaders of our nation in both the public and the private squares have proven to be frail shells of their former selves. Even in the church, and many of our venerable guiding organizations within it, have seemed to wobble and bend under the pressure of social media, trolls of the internet, and mob mentality of the culture today, rather than robustly proclaiming biblical and confessional doctrine. But one thing I have not lost faith in is you. That's right. All of you sitting right here with me today. You have proven to me time and time again that you will not wait for man-made messiahs to redeem your community. You have shown me over and over again you believe in the eternal messiah Jesus who grew up ready to be groomed by the cross to take our dead soul away forever. You will not pass on responsibility just for the next miracle program to be handed down by the bureaucracy. You won't let man-made institutions and counselors get in the way of your real relationship with Christ. But don't get me wrong. You, like me, will sin but you'll be forgiven because you know where the true vine Christ gives his body and blood to nourish you as branches extended from him to bear fruit concerning and for you. All you, like me, will be tempted, but you will not be lured away by the poisonous ivy of the world seeking to destroy your soul with false flowers and flattery that stroke your ego but wreck 
your soul. Because your baptismal identity refreshes your faith every time you remember your attachment to Christ. Oh, you, like me, will have pain in this world. You will not be able to avoid the burdens of the thistles and the weeds of self, doubt, stress, sickness, and weakness that seek to choke out the light of Christ that you can never see again. But, because you believe that you are firmly tempted by Christ, you are in the creation and you are a child of the ultimate husbandman's creator. I see it. In your utter devotion to the ministry of the school and outreach to our community. I see it in your care for our professional church workers. I witness it every day in your faithful attendance, Bible devotion, witness, and evangelism to the world. He has room. He has clean. And he has removed all the obstacles to faith from you. Jesus is the true vine. You are truly his branches. And by the work of the Holy Spirit, you know that's true. Amen. Now may that peace which surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus always. Yes. We continue with our prayer for the church. How is, how is Calvin doing? Oh, wow. Is he doing good? Yeah, he's just inviting me to press and getting better and better each day. We're so pleased about that. Uh, we are also going to add Lisa to our prayers this morning. In addition to that, her grandson, a little three-year-old, had a severe asthma attack such that it required her to rush up there to be a help to the family. So we're going to lift him up in prayers. Uh, Wanda, were you able to get that name? Where's the grandson? Are you up there, sweetie? Did we get that name? Leo? Leo. Thank you. Leo. Uh, uh, so we will include Leo in your prayers. Lisa's grandson, the three year old, has a severe as of that. Let's pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, with the whole creation, we praise you for your gift of life and the world that sustains us and all the living. Grant that seeing your even greater gift of deliverance from the disfigurement of sin and the promise of the renewal of your original design, all people may come to repentance and faith in your gracious invitation through Jesus Christ, risen and victorious over death. Lord, in your mercy, Give power to your word as it is proclaimed boldly by your church, filled with the Holy Spirit and the faithful witness of all. As it is preached and taught by all who are ordained and commissioned by you, as well as those whom you have given the gifts to be faithful witnesses of your salvation and glory. Lord, in your mercy, turn the hearts of all who bear the authority of government in our land and around the world that they serve and lead all people in the ways of justice, peace, and freedom. Lord, in your mercy, to all who suffer now, sickness, sorrow, injury, including Leo, John, and Cal, Calvin, Judy, and Matthew, Fred, Alan, and Sal, Don, Clint and Carol, and lift up before us now all those who are in need or give comfort to your healing. To all who suffer any persecution for standing for the truth of the Christian faith, give them strength to endure. To all increase faith and faithfulness, believing that the risen Christ leads us to the glory of eternal life in your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. In your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, I would like to invite the elder on duty to report the offerings of the congregation. <laughs>
about the praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death, and by his rising again, he has restored us to everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we love and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising, healing, singing.
Were you able to get that and bring bring this morning? Outstanding. Do you have a stack of those, or do I need to make copies for you, or do I just read off what they need? Uh, we'll work it out. Okay, we'll work it out. We'll work it out. Very good. Uh, will I put that in your capable hands? You don't know what the bags are, do you, Michael? Right. It, it doesn't look like at home. I'll just show it. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all been using it for grocery shopping, haven't you? <laughs> those are for the needy people. <laughs> All right, so if you have one of those red bags, just please bring it back. Please, please. No, no, you don't. You don't. You don't. Yeah, that's just going to rely on what happened out today. Um, so, uh, Mike and Louise will take care of making sure we know what food supplies you need and everything. They've got that list for you today. Um, so, we'll work that out. I'll let you guys figure that out. Um, here thing, we always like to make sure we welcome our first time guests and visitors that are with us for the first time with a little bit of token of appreciation for you coming and joining us today and being brave enough to walk into this strange building. So, if you don't mind greeting us now, we would love to greet you with that token of our appreciation. If you prefer not to stand up in front of a stranger, that's totally fine. I'm happy to give you a gift after church. We're just glad you came today and love to have you with us. And if you're looking for a new church home, we just wanted to let you know you found it. We'd love to have you here and make you part of our ministry. So I know everybody in this section right here. We'll move to this section here. Any first time guests and visitors? Any first time guests and visitors? Ryan's trying to out somebody. <laughs> He's trying to, oh, no, he's here. He wasn't going to let you get away with that, was he? There we go. Get you. First of all, let me put my mask on. Sorry about that. Always ill prepared here. There we go. There we go. And where are you visiting us from, darling? What are you, Jesus? Mount Lord, this is good. This is good. Nothing wrong with that. Oh my goodness. Oh, sure. Well, the class out of town is outstanding. Very good. Well, it's a very simple transfer if you like it here. Um, you do know they have that other recent thing here, right? Okay, all right. <laughs> sure, for sure. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, I'd love to have to take it for like a year every day. Love to that. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. Well, we would love to have another year. You are certainly welcome here. We'd love to have you. With the cross and the penny, sure to keep. We don't want filling out the little form. I'll give it to you on Monday. We'll talk more about that. And then another little goodie bag to go with that. And tell me your favorite one, please. Joyce, everybody make Joyce feel welcome today. Nice to have you with us today, Joyce, okay? Very good, I'll stand up. And Mr. Joyce? <laughs> yeah, it's, it takes a lot, you gotta be brave to stand up and pass it down. Really good, Joyce, I'll stand Any first time guests and visitors in this section here? Wonderful. Where are you guys visiting us from? Wonderful, very good. You also moved to Mountain, where are you moving from? I'll call you the whole Coming up. That's right. Kids program coming up on May the 
Eighteen. 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 Thank yeah, you. Don't want to miss that. There's nothing cooler than those kids are involved in. Outstanding. So the children's church program, obviously we get a lot of cool kids with that too, but it's just really exciting to behold. One of Marcy and I's favorite date night when we get to go out with the children. In fact, I skipped an elders meeting so I could go to this. Yeah. In fact, I canceled an elders meeting so I could go to this. That's how important these little kiddos are to me. So very excited to hear them the too. Elders, the elders did not mind that. Yeah. Don't forget to make Kathy, Tim, and Joyce feel welcome.